Good morning, traders. It is Tuesday, September the 17th. Taking a look at the charts, we got the 30 minute chart of the SP 500 on the left, showing from a red bars, which are downtrend, into an uptrend. And where we are with our cycle projection overall, it's showing uh, we had a little sell off over the last session and a half, a little bit of a potential bear flag, a bounce off this five day moving average. And we could see it continue to sell off more or less today based on this uh, pink our cycle projection here. So we, the markets are set to open lower today. Could be under some pressure, but we might continue to see them pick up speed after uh, today's pullback. Now, if we look at the daily chart, I feel as though we're somewhere into this type of market range, very similar to kind of over here, where more or less the market has had a very strong pop. And then we get into these kind of these um, kind of this grind higher where it rallies up and then we see it pull back and then it pops up to some new highs and pulls back pops up we're in this kind of grind where eventually we can see a very sharp decline out of this and this is what we've seen happen in the last couple uh, tops where we just continue to grind make these nominal new highs and then the market collapses and has a big sell-off so I think we could see a little bit more downside over the next session or so but overall I am anticipating this to continue to kind of grind and form some type of topping formation some volatility in, in price I mean, we'll just see the, the the price chop around either sideways or grind its way higher uh, before it starts to uh, uh, create some type of type topping pattern where we can start to see price roll over and for us to potentially get in for another short. We did a short over here. We played this short over here. And um, we'll, uh, we played the long with the Russell 2000 here. And now we're going to be looking for potentially another... Um, at this point, we'd be looking still for an entry point. If we get an oversold uh, condition, we would get long again. But if it starts to roll over and the market tra changes trends, we would be looking to get net short with an inverse ETF. Now, if we take a look over at uh, take a look at the Toronto Stock Exchange, We've, it's breaking out to to uh, big highs here, outperforming the U.S. market. And we saw this back in 2007, 2008, where we we see commodities outperform in the very end game of a bull market in U.S. equities. The Toronto Stock Exchange outperform. We see metals and miners start to outperform and oil. And we're seeing all that come into play. And it doesn't matter if there's news or not uh, moving it. When you go back and you look at the major cycles, this is something that happens over and over again. The news behind it, um, you know, it does help a little bit. But overall, it's going to be the natural bias of money moving into commodities. They're so undervalued compared to these overvalued stock valuations and so we're, we're into this end game this is what we've been looking for commodities start to outperform toronto stock exchange to outperform and um, i think the uh, the music is going to come to an end here soon but the market always has a way of taking a lot longer than you think to play out i think we're, we're potentially still months out but overall there's not a whole lot more upside i think in equities uh, in the grand scheme of things for a long-term investor i think the market will reset which is a bear market uh, more or less a recession uh, for a little bit and cleanse the market uh, in a bigger way before going much higher now if we take a look over at uh, let's pull up the dollar real quick dollar continues to hold up it's holding above the 20 day this pink line here and we're kind of grinding its way out here overall continues to be the safe haven play up yesterday and uh, we've, we've we're, we're still in the long uh, long trend meaning we're, we're going higher and we could continue to see this index go up and try and touch the 100 mark which would be equivalent to this ETF trading up here above uh, 27 27 25 somewhere up there going forward uh, if we look over at metals the miners and metals we we uh, ended up getting out right near the top and we're letting it kind of consolidate and try and build a base. We talked about this last week. You can see how the market, we've got green bars here on the left-hand chart. We've gone into somewhat of an oversold market condition, and then it got into negative territory. Right now, it is still negative. The bias is to the downside. Sellers continue to be in here. And um, obviously, this type of news hitting the market with uh, Saudi Arabia um, gave a little bit of a pop, but overall we are still in a downtrend. We're, we're looking for the metals and miners to potentially put in a base, but we got to be aware that this is a big move down. It's forming a bear flag, more or less. We could very easily see a nice ABC correction. You get a nice A, B, C correction. The C correction is what cleanses the market. It breaks a significant pivot low and uh, any low over here as well and it'll create everyone to or those who are chasing prices to get flushed out of the market it'll settle down somewhere into this somewhere into this support zone this previous topping phase 
our topic pattern and we can start to see it move higher from there so that's what we're looking for the question is do we have a leg down and we look to get long over here or is it going to start to break out and we have to look to uh, get in for another move up here and that's where we are in the grand scheme of things if we look at silver down three quarters of a percent this morning um, big move down tight bear flag started to move down some news helping pop it up but overall uh, if we look at the trend analysis, we've gone orange, meaning we are technically in a downtrend. We've shifted from an uptrend to a, a downtrend, and we're, we're looking for it to potentially continue to go a bit lower and break down. Maybe it's going to find a base here. We'll see where it goes. But let's take a look over at miners. GDXJ continuing to move down. Strong sell-off, a little bit of a hiccup with a big head fake. Continues to sell off. Yesterday, big update in miners. Obviously, uh, people popping popping into the safe havens a little bit yesterday simply um, talk of you know potential war bombings all that stuff it's usually good for metals so the speculative money popped into gold or into gold miners anticipating hoping gold's going to move higher with um, potentially some chaos going on but overall it's news-based movement uh, for the markets uh, you got to remember what happens with news is usually just a spike in price it's a blip in the radar and most of those moves are given back uh, over a little bit of time. So let's go over to crude. Crude down 1.5% this morning. I was away yesterday, as I pointed out, uh, Sunday night. I wasn't going to be able to uh, get to the markets or update. Uh, but overall, big news over the weekend, obviously, Saudi Arabia. Huge pop in, in crude. We never really had a setup in crude. Very messy chart. Not a fan of this type of price action. So it doesn't really matter what it does. We weren't in a play. We're letting it do its thing. And this just uh, is just... Uh, adds a lot more noise to it and not looking to to do anything at this point if anything i'd be more inclined to want to fade it down have some type of pullback it is a news-based spike but again this type of news that came out it could really unfold to be something um, pretty significant and it could affect gold and miners as well so it's going to let the market kind of work things out for a little bit and we don't really want to trade the news Tr news is completely unpredictable and it's going to hit at any time and you don't know what's going to happen and, um, so we're just going to kind of avoid those areas uh, i'm not, not a chaser of trades like that looking over at natural gas down one percent this morning it's uh, coming into this 50-day um, moving average or 200-day moving average and pretty significant uh, resistance zone on the chart if we just look at uh, not only is it the 200 day moving average but it goes right through into this consolidation into this significant top before the market really crashed and uh, that's where we're at with it, uh, it's struggling here it came to its first resistance area which is where we got out we caught this nice move up for a nice uh, about 11 percent gain now it's getting into the volatility where it's uh, really skyrocketing pulling back popping higher again into resistance starting to sell down uh, this is going to be a noisy phase could be something like this um, in a downtrend you get into this type of noisy phase in a noisy phase tougher to trade you're really trying to squeeze more out of the market we went for just a quick uh, we got in we caught the first move to resistance and we got out now we're going to let the market do its thing and look for some more significant uh, potential trend and in the big the big scheme of things this is a big potential trend that could be taking place we are looking for some type of more significant consolidation because we do feel as though this is going to head up to the three mark eventually and potentially even go higher than that let's take a quick look at the chart of bonds obviously bonds they topped out rolled over they are now in a downtrend they're getting pretty oversold we saw a knee-jerk reaction bounce over the last uh, session and a half here it's stuck under this five-day mo uh, moving average and i got a feeling it's going to start to try to carve out a bottom we're getting into this area here this kind of breakout zone this previous high i think it we're going to get into uh, choppiness where it'll form some bottoming formation for us to potentially get long eventually and we i think we could see bonds start to flatline a little bit build a base and we could potentially get long bonds and we could start to see the equities market start to, to roll over but that might not be for several weeks so these are this is a process big sell-off now we're going to let some type of formation form whether we get net short for another leg down after some bear flag here or is it going to form a base and we look to get long bonds down the road last but not least let's take a look over at utilities we are long utilities and looking at the price you can see it's having a nice consolidation it's had a nice run up 
popped up, pulled back, it's popped up again, pulling back. It's forming what looks to be a, another launch pad for it to go higher. It's had a nice run, a pullback, a run, a pullback, another run, and it's having a, a bigger kind of consolidation here. Hopefully it'll hold its ground somewhere along this area. Uh, yesterday's lows was a nice dip down to the 20 day and got bought right back up. So hopefully it'll find support along this channel here and eventually just start to break out to the upside. And we could see a much more significant run going forward. So if the equities market starts to show signs of a top, if it starts to chop around a bit, money's going to get fearful and they're going to move into utilities and uh, likely into bonds, into metals as the safe haven play. So we're just letting the money kind of rotate from one asset class to the other. And we're playing, trying to catch the middle section of each of these moves uh, before they get into some type of volatility topping phase or bottoming phase. We just want the middle section here. Get in, catch the trend, get out, and avoid all this uh, big gaps in price and choppiness. Anyways, that's it for this morning. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye-bye.